Hey folks, Phil Zito here, and welcome to day 12 of BAS Bootcamp. As you can tell, it's 9 o'clock in the evening. It has been a long day, and uh, finally got the kids to bed. So now I'm going to be able to record today's video for you. So as you recall, we were looking at supervisory devices this week, and today we are going to be looking at BACnet networks, which are the most common network types for our supervisory devices. And as we recall, the main purpose of our supervisory devices was and still largely remains as a discovery device for our field controllers and our field controllers are typically connected via network. So what you'll see with a BACnet network is that you have kind of two types. You have a MSTP port, also known as a RS-485 port, and a IP port. Now, IP is all the rage lately. This is what everyone seems to be largely interested in. And so what we can see right here is that we have our network number, we have our link for our BACnet IP. Um, you can see it has a standard UDP port. And if you're like, what is UDP? What is IP? What is all this stuff? Um, we have a class on IT that will teach you all this. But uh, as I was saying, you have your port, you have your IP address, you have all of these settings, and all of this comes together in order to enable you to communicate with controllers. And then on the MSTP side, we have some different settings. So IP is largely logical, meaning there's no physical IP address. It doesn't exist. Whereas there is a physical DIP switch typically to set your MSTP MAC address, there is no physical IP address. So IP is all logical and the settings are logical, whereas MSTP, the settings are physical. Now, with it being a physical serial network trunk, we're going to see that we can adjust the speed via this baud rate. You want to have the baud rate the same for every controller that's on that network segment. You can also have your MSTP addresses. So your MSTP addresses, also known as your MAC addresses, these are going to be unique hardware addresses for each controller. So each controller needs to have a unique one. And we're also going to have devices. Um, so we're going to have our device IDs. So if we go to our local device here, we'll see we have a device ID here. It's got to be unique device ID. Um, you don't want to have device ID conflicts. So now to discover our devices. So in order to go about discovering devices, and this will look different depending on which vendor software you're on, but you go to, uh, in this case, BACnet network, we pick discover. We're gonna look at our IP network because it's a lot faster. We're gonna limit our range because I already know that our controllers are within the 1000 to 1100 range. So we're gonna hit that and we are going to do our discovery. And discovery will go for a little while. And once it's gone, then we should see some controllers start to come in. So we do, we see some controllers come in and we can select both of these and add them, right? So right here, we would have a chance to go and configure it, change it, whatever we wanted. We're just gonna keep all the settings as is. And we'll add the same one here. Sorry for yawning. I'm just a little tired. It's been a really long day. Um, so we'll go into server one and we'll see it's all communicating. Everything's all good. So if we scroll down, we'll see server one down here. And now we can see a lot more data now that the controller's mapped in, right? We can see our network number, our address. We can see that we have backnet alarms, any backnet schedules, any backnet trend logs. Uh, if we were going to use change of value, we could do that. Um, more on that later when we talk about trends and extensions like that. Now, we obviously, it's all well and good that we have our controller mapped in, but you probably want to get the points from the controller mapped in too. So this is where we go and we do discovery of our points. So if I run our discovery... And we're going to see it's running up here. And it's going to pull every point that is available. 
within the controller. And a lot of these points I left named analog value. And the reason why is I want to show you the importance of properly naming your points. So as we could see, we could scroll through this all day and eventually we're gonna run into a point and you can see how many points we have right here, right? So many different points, so many schedules. So it's really important that we either don't make points discoverable or we actually go and make sure that if a point is discoverable, that it's properly named. So I'm gonna add zone temp here. Uh, I'm gonna see it's an analog value. I'm gonna see, uh, and it's important to understand what kind of point you're mapping in because for example, if we had a set point and we mapped it in as an input, we would not have a priority array, we would not be able to change that point. So we've gotta pay attention to how we map things in. We can also set up you know, our unit types. If we wanted to, we could go and set up any type of unit we needed. So in this case, you know, if we wanted to go do, 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 down here to temperature, and we wanted to set Fahrenheit, we could do so, so that it, you know, zone temp, it's gonna be temperatures Fahrenheit. There's a lot we can set up in here, right? This is, it's read only, which makes sense because it's zone temp. You don't want people overriding zone temp. Now, at this point, it's important to understand how your manufacturer's software works. Because for some folks, this is all you're gonna have to do. You're gonna map in, it's gonna show up as an AI if it's a read-only point, it's gonna show up as an AV or an AO if it's a writable point with a priority array. Um, in the case of this software right here, what we need to do, like let's say we wanna go and add this exhaust air damper command. And we start looking at it and we're like, oh man, it's AV, but it's read only. Oh, I know how to fix this. Maybe AV's mess messed up, so I'll do analog output, right? And we see immediately we get a fault because that's not the right object type. But then you say to yourself, like analog value, that has a priority array, so why am I not able to write to it? Well, real simple, with this software the way it is, you need to pick a writable point. So we'll do that, we'll enable the point, and now it'll be writable and life is good. And we can see now we have our priority array because it could say 100 at default, right? And if we wanted to, we could go and do commands on it. So this is how you go about mapping in points to your building automation system. You go and you discover the devices and then you discover the points. So if you ever hear someone saying running a device discovery, that's what's going on. You discover the devices via the field trunk and then you discover the points. And once you've discovered the points and you've added them, they're in here now. So now, you know, I can go and I can you know, go to my wire sheet and I can see under my points that, right, actually let me go to, let me go to wire sheet view. I can see here under my points, do, 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 that the points I have mapped in, right, are right here. I can then go into my actual programming, so I can open this up, and I can start to write logic. You know, if I wanted to, I could have like a PID loop, and I could have a set point, And you know, that set point could come in right here, and then my point right here could come into there, and then I could go and drive my exhaust air damper based on the uh, difference between zone set point and zone temp. Obviously, there'd be more setup to this. But that's how this works, right? You go and you have your trunk, you discover your devices, you discover your points, and then you map this all in. I hope this was helpful to you. I hope that this uh, kind of exposed a lot of the terminology that maybe you've heard, but you're like, what does that actually mean? And in tomorrow's video, we'll start to look more at points and point extensions. So thanks a ton for watching. And as always, leave any questions in the comment section below the video. Thanks a ton. Take care.